Hello, I'm Craig, and today we're going to code something very simple in Scratch to get to know some of the programming blocks. The description area for this video has more resources to go deeper into the nuts and bolts of Scratch, but we're just going to jump right in and get started. And don't hesitate to put me on pause if you need more time. All right, open up Scratch and let's code. So let me go to the Scratch website. I went to scratch.mit.edu and I'm just going to click on create here. And there we go. And so I'm just going to take the Scratch cat away so you can see the actor I was talking about, the sprite, which is on the stage right here. I'm going to X out of this character just so we start from nothing at all. There you go. So we're, we're completely blank. And what I'd like to do is have you make a face. So you're going to code along with me and make a face. Um, so two eyes, a nose, and a mouth. But we're just going to use different sprites. And one example I'm going to use is an apple for an eyeball. And I'll stick in a balloon for the other eyeball. And we'll write a script for it. And then you'll be able to see that, um, what it looks like. So I'm going to go down to the sprite pane right here. And you can see the cat with the little plate plus sign. So if I click on that, a whole bank of sprites will open up for me and you can see they're categorized here and you can also search by keyword if you want to find them and so I'm just going to use the apple one you can see here I'll click on that and there's my apple now on my stage and you can see my sprite is here as well and this kind of grayed out area here is my script so I, when I have many sprites um, I'll be able to keep track of which sprite I'm actually coding for. And we can see here there is no code just yet. So I have my sprite there just to show me which one I'm working on. So here's my apple, and I'm going to move it around the stage. This is going to be my right eyeball, I guess. We can call it that. And you can see as I drag it around, the X and Y coordinates are changing according, accordingly. So I could drop it wherever I want. And if I want it to be very accurate, I can actually key in the specific location for it. I can do that there. So, but for our purposes, we're just going to drag it and drop it. And something else to think about is when I do have a completed face here, this eyeball is going to be kind of big for what I'm going to try and create. So this size thing right here, I'm going to go in and change the size. So you can go along and follow and do that as well. So I made it 50, 50% 50 of the size. And you can see when I entered, now that apple is much smaller than it was before. So there it is. There's my apple on the stage. And the next thing I want to do or to start with this thing is I want to um, execute the motion or the, the action that this apple is going to take. And I'll do that by pressing the green flag if I want to do that. So I'm going to have to go into the coding blocks. Remember, I was talking about these being the words to your script. So the coding block I'm looking for is an event, this yellowish one here. And I'm going to grab this one. So when the green flag is clicked, I'll drag that over into my script area. So when the green flag is clicked, I want something to happen. And you can tell this is kind of a starter block because you can see the dome up here, which is not the same as, I'll just go into the motion block here. You can see that move block has kind of a Lego notch to it. So it, it fits together with pieces, right? So the one we took was this yellowish one. It has a dome, which means it's the start of the program. It's an, an initiator, if you want to call it that. So let me just drag this move block back into the library. And what I'm going to do for the apple is I'm going to make it spin when I execute this program. So I'm going to use the turn command right here, turn 15 degrees. I'm going to drag that over. And another thing I'm going to do is just change that 15 degrees to 45. And the reason I'm doing that is when I execute the program, 45 is a nice clean number to get a full circle when I want to bring it back to its original place. And so let's just run that. If I hit the green flag, there you go. You can see the apple turn 45 degrees and another 45 and another 45 and so on. So I'm going to click it right through just to bring it back to the beginning. There it is. And now you can pause the video at this location and um, finish up or make sure you can catch up to where I've gotten to in this code along. And then when you're ready, you can continue the video and we'll we'll go on to the next step.
Okay, very good. So let's get on to the other eyeball. I'm going to go choose a balloon for my other eye. So again, I will go down to my cat with a plus sign and open that up and you can see the balloon right there. I'm going to use this one. And interestingly, you'll notice that, see the balloon is changing between colors? That tells me that this sprite has many costumes. It could change into different costumes that are made for you actually. So we won't have to do anything to it and it'll change. Unlike the apple, when I mouse over the apple, nothing happens because it's a standalone image with no costumes. It, it exists as you see it there. So the balloon's kind of a fun one. There's different costumes that we could potentially play with. So I'll click on the balloon and there you go. And you'll remember from before that balloon's going to be too big compared to the eye. And I'll go to the size down here. And again, let's do 50% like we did with the apple. 50, and I'll press return. And there, that's a little bit better size-wise. All right. So again, the apple. We see our script. You can see the grayed out apple there. So we know which sprite we're working on. When I go to the balloon, the grayed out balloon and there's no script for it. So let's let's jump into that and give it something to do. So you'll remember we needed an event to start the program for our apple before. So with the balloon, same thing. We're going to use when the green flag is clicked, just like before. And for this one, I'm going to actually play with that next costume business that we talked about before that we just looked at. So that's an appearance, right? Or a look. So this purple block here, or this purple series of blocks gives me some different options in the purple ones. And I'm going to scroll down to next costume. And I'm not seeing it. So I'll scroll back up next backdrop, next costume. There it is. So there you go. I'll drag and drop that one in to my initiating block right here, my control block. And so when I click on the green flag, yes, the apple's going to do its thing from before because it was the same command. But now the balloon is going to do something as well. So let's do it. We'll click on the green flag. There you go. So you can see it's changing costumes. It's changing colors, the balloon and the apple's turning. So I'm going to keep clicking the green flag to bring the apple back to the beginning like before because it was rotating. There you go. And so now you give it a try. You can pause the video, fill in this part of your program, and then we can restart again for the next spread. Okay, for this next one, let's go get a strawberry to put in for the nose. So again, the cat with the plus sign down here. I will open that up. And just to speed things up, I could either search for, I'm going to look for a strawberry. Let's go to food, this category. If I click on food and there's my strawberry. And that one has some fun things it'll do. So I'll grab that one. There's my strawberry. I'm going to size it again like we did before. So let's go 50% again. And I'm going a little bit faster now, but I, I think you're getting the hang of it. Let's press enter. There's my smaller strawberry. I will place it. All right. And to my event category, when the green flag is clicked. Um, so that I'm going to make it strobe a little bit. I know you saw the strawberry dancing before. Those are the costumes that come with it, but I, I want it to flash on and off several times. So I'm going to go to the purple looks blocks right here. And I'm looking for hide and show down here. I can see it. So there's a hide block. And there's a show block. And now the way code works, if I say hide and I say show simultaneously, this is kind of not going to work because it's going to do both of those things at the same time. So likely it's just going to show the strawberry. I'm just going to click the uh, the green flag just to show you what that looks like. So it looks like nothing happened. I saw the apple spin. I saw the balloon change color. The strawberry didn't seem to do anything. That's because it's doing these things simultaneously. It's hiding and it's showing at the same time. So as always, I'm going to click through to bring my apple back to the beginning. It's spinning. There we go. Um, so what I'm going to have to do is I want the strawberry to hide, but I need it a delay to happen before it actually shows itself. So I'm going to go to the control blocks right here. 
and this one says to wait for one second. Um, and one second is kind of a long time when we want something to flash really quickly. So I'm actually going to change that one second to 0.1 of a second. So it's going to hide for 0.1 of a second, and then it's going to show. So that would actually work. So let's click the green flag just to show you what that looks like. Ah, there we go. We got a bit of a flash happening. And as always, I'm going to click the green flag just to bring the apple back to its original spot. And now for that strawberry, I would like that strobe to happen or the hide show at 0.1 seconds repeatedly. And so I'm going to go to a repeat command. You can see also in the control commands here, there's a repeat 10 right there. I'll drag that over into our program. And I'm just going to change it to five times. It's going to repeat five times. That should be plenty. And this is a little bit tricky. When I drag the repeat over, I want to make sure I get the hide button, the wait button, and the show button all inside the repeat. And so it gets a bit tricky Tricky when I drag it over. I'm not sure if I'm in the right place. You can see it's turning gray, gray there, and I left out the hide, but I want that. So what I do sometimes is I'll leave the repeat button down here, the repeat block. I'll grab the commands that I want inside that repeat block. You can see I have it there. And I'll drag it over to make sure it pops right in. So you see it went gray right in between. There's nothing sticking out of the gray area that is. And when I drop it, boom, there you go. So it's back inside the entire repeat five. So now when I pop that back onto when the green flag is clicked, there's my nice program. It's going to repeat five times. What's the repeat? It's hide, wait for 0.1 of a second, and show. And so I'll let you do that now. That, that was a lot to digest. Maybe we're moving a bit faster, but try that with the strawberry incorporate this code, these blocks that are here, pause the video, and then when you're ready, we'll go on to the next uh, sprite. And for this last part, let's add a mouth. So we'll go to the cat with the plus sign, choose our sprite. And this one is trickier to find. I'm going to key in rainbow, R-A-I-N, there it is rainbow. That's going to be our mouth. Looks like kind of a sad mouth right now, but we're going to fix that up. And the size is okay, actually. But let's spin it around. And so one tricky way to do that is see the direction right here is at 90 degrees. I can spin it to minus 90, which will be a, a happier smile. There we go. So that's spun around. And now let's get into the code for it. So remember our event when the green flag is clicked. And this time, because it's a mouth, I'm going to have it say something. So I'm going to go again to the looks. And this block right here says, say hello for two seconds. And the good thing about that is we don't have to put in a wait or a pause or anything like that. It's going to take care of it. It's going to say hello for two seconds. Um, and I'm going to use another, the same block, say hello again, but I could change the text of what's going to be said. So here I'm going to say, have a great day. There you go. And we'll say three seconds because there's more words to read there. There you go. So pretty straightforward. We can run the program now, and maybe we'll see the whole thing now if I press the run program. There we go. We had the apple turn a little bit, the balloon changed color, the strawberry did its thing, and the smiley face did its thing as well. So up to you now. You can put this code in and add the smiley face and see how that works for you. So pause the video, get that done, and then we'll, we'll close it off by putting a background in. Now let's wrap this up by just pulling the face together. We're going to put uh, a head or a background on here to make it look more like a face. So just like the sprites, over in this area here, you have the, the stage backdrop. 
So you can click on the image with the plus sign like we did before with the cat and the plus sign for the sprite. So this is for a backdrop. I'll click on there. And there's all kinds of backgrounds you can put in. Um, but for our purposes, we just, even this heart would have been a, a cute background. I'm going to go with this light shape right here. And there you have it. My backdrop is there. I can then move around my sprites to place them on this face a little bit better. And they'll still execute the way they did before because you can see my scripts appearing for each one. And there you have it. There's your face animated. Now it's up to you. You can continue building on this, uh, add to this existing face, or jump into something brand new. You now know your way around the Scratch interface and you explored four types of coding blocks. At this point, you want to be able to save and share your products. So you need to create an account. I'll just show you what that looks like. So remember when you first went to scratch.mit.edu, you came to this page, but you were on the create button right there. To save your work, you'll need an account and you can do that by clicking on join and then you'll follow the steps to, to be able to create that account and here's my account from today's code along so i'll name my program so i can find it later i'm just going to change that untitled 20 and we'll call it face there you go and then i can go to file and save now and project saved and it's in my account and i can also share it i'm going to do that now so that i can share it with others to access and i could copy the link if i needed to and that's all for now so thanks for scratching along with me today